Today we're going to be learning about symbiotic relationships. This is a very important part in biology. Once you understand how relationships work out between animals, humans, and plants on the earth, a lot of other concepts in biology tend to work well with each other and you understand them a little bit more. The term symbiosis means the interaction between two different organisms living together. Usually there is a host and a symbiont. A host is usually the larger of the two organisms. The symbiont usually is the smaller member. There are three different types of symbiotic relationships. The first one is called parasitism. The second one is called mutualism. The third is called commensalism. Parasitism is a relationship where the symbiont lives in or on the host. The symbiont, or parasite, benefits. The host is harmed. For example, the tick in the picture above is a parasite. It benefits by extracting blood from its human host. The human is harmed. Mutualism, on the other hand, is a relationship between the host and a symbiont, where both organisms benefit and neither is harmed. This relationship can be long-term or sometimes short-term. For example, in the photo above, the host flower benefits by being pollinated by the traveling butterfly. The symbiont, which is the butterfly, benefits because the nectar that it extracts from the flower. The butterfly is getting food and the flower is being pollinated. So in this case, it's a plus-plus relationship. Each one is benefiting. The last relationship, called commensalism, is a relationship between the host and the symbiont, where the symbiont benefits and the host is neither helped nor harmed. The symbiont benefits by receiving transportation, housing, or even maybe nutrition. For example, in the photo above, the symbiont is the barnacles. I know it's hard to see, but if you look at the whale's arm, those little bumps to the side over there are barnacles. This is actually an organism that is receiving transportation from the whale. They aren't able to move through the water as quick as a whale can, so they kind of attach on, and when the whale goes for a ride, the barnacles get transportation. The host whale is neither helped nor harmed by these barnacles. He or she probably doesn't even know that they're there. Now let's see if y'all are ready to answer some questions. In this photo, the cleaner fish, which is inside the eel's mouth, receives nourishment by dining off of the parasites and remaining food debris in the eel's mouth. Is this an example of parasitism, mutualism, or commensalism? That's right, it's mutualism. The reason being is because the eel is getting his mouth cleaned and the little fish is getting food. Well, I'm sure you all love this picture. Yes, it is a human foot and there is a fungus on it called athlete's foot. I'm sure maybe some of you might have had it. Is this an example of parasitism, commensalism, or mutualism between the fungus and the human? That's right, it's parasitism. Reason being is because the human is being harmed. If you could see, the fungus is growing on his foot. It obviously doesn't look that good. Um, the fungus is eating off any kind of nutrients that it might be able to find on the foot. So the fungus is obviously benefiting, and the host, which is the human, is being harmed. In this picture, you'll see a clownfish. Kind of looks like Finding Nemo. Clownfish are frequently found in the tentacles of sea enemies. Sea enemies, which are the green little fingery things look around the fish, capture their prey by paralyzing them with their tentacles. However, the clownfish produces a mucus that prevents the tentacles from harming it. By dwelling amongst the tentacles, the clownfish receives a protected home. The sea enemies also are benefited by this because if any kind of other fish comes to try and eat off the sea enemy or attack it, the clownfish will come out and try to attack that fish. The clownfish is trying to protect his home. What relationship is this an example of?
That's right, it's mutualism. The clownfish is obviously getting a place to live, so the clownfish is benefiting, and the sea enemy is getting some kind of protection from the clownfish. In this picture, the birds are munching on tiny parasitic insects located on the rhino. The relationship between the birds and the rhino is an example of what? Parasitism, mutualism, or commensalism. It is mutualism. Uh, a lot of students tend to pick parasitism because they believe the bird is harming the rhino in some way. But actually, the rhino is benefiting from this. The birds are getting food. They're eating the parasites off the rhino. So they're like, yay, we're getting food. This is great. I'm benefiting. The rhino, on the other hand, um, or I shouldn't say on the other hand, is benefiting as well because the parasites are not on the rhino anymore. If you didn't have the birds eating them off, then the rhino would obviously have parasites. This picture right here is kind of a giveaway. I'm guessing you can already see what kind of relationship it is. The lamprey is a primitive fish with a limited digestive system. They attach to and feed on the body fluids of other fish. So the lamprey are the eel looking things. Um, they feed on the other fish that have more advanced digestive systems, often leading to the death of the host fish. This is a relationship example of which one? That's right, parasitism. That one's kind of easy. You can obviously see the host is actually dying from this lamprey sucking on him and, you know, taking all of the nutrients from him. In this picture, you have orchids growing on the branches of high trees. These orchids get more water and sunlight than those on the ground. Um, the tree is unaffected by the orchid's presence. So, basically, the orchids are growing up high to receive more sun and any other kind of nutrients they can get from being at a higher advantage. What example is this? Parasitism, mutualism, or commensalism? This is actually commensalism. Um, we haven't had a lot of examples of these. It usually goes mutualism or parasitism, but um, you'll find commensalism a lot with these kind of plants. The orchid grows high up on the tree and is benefiting. Uh, they're getting sunlight, water, any nutrients they wouldn't be able to get on the ground. The tree is unaffected um, by this. There's no way that they can be affected. A lot of times in the Caribbean or rainforest, you'll see this kind of thing happening because there's not a lot of sunlight going to the understory of the forest. At some point though, if for whatever reason the orchids were to grow very heavily, be very stocked on the tree, started to uh, make the tree, you know, limp over, then at that point it would switch to parasitism. And our last relationship of the day. This is also a giveaway. Um, I've had a lot of these in our story today, but I just had to show this picture. This is a picture of a dog's heart. <clears throat> inside the dog's heart are heartworms. Obviously, they're heartworms. They're inside a heart. Um, this Obviously, this dog did die because they had heartworms so bad. Um, they did take the heart out for some kind of studies or so veterinarians could see or, you know, we could use these pictures for, uh, for reasons in the classroom. So with that being said, would this be parasitism, commensalism, or mutualism? Oh, I know, I didn't have to give you that much time. Parasitism, this one's a pretty easy one. Um, obviously, the dog was harmed. They, it ended up in death, and the worms did benefit. Um, but the thing is, is the worm's only going to benefit as long as the dog is alive. Once the dog dies, there's really no other nutrients for it to feast on. Well, I want to thank you all for clicking on my video. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you learned all the three different symbiotic relationships, and you'll be able to use this in any of your homework or things you need help with.